Have you ever encountered hole tolerance issues when using a 3D printer to design parts with specific dimensions for fittings? Typically, people buy rimmers to adjust the holes. But this tool may only be used for one project. Is there a better solution for adjusting hole sizes? Hi, welcome to Slow Engineering. I'm David. Consider printing smaller holes and grinding some material for precise hole dimensions to achieve the perfect fit. This will allow you to adjust the tolerance. While drilling suits coarse dimensions, rimming is better for precise holes. However, purchasing a rimmer for a specific project may be inefficient, but the tolerance is still necessary. In my project, I'm developing a tool changer system that uses two stepper motors to power a floating bar mechanism for moving the tool heads and ducts. The motor frame part requires a 22mm diameter hole for the stepper fitting. It's important to know that the motor cannot fit into the frame with a smaller hole setting. While tuning the slicers and printing specific sizes for the parts is a potential solution, it's important to acknowledge that the hole still has tolerance based on various factors such as slicer settings, temperature issues, and shrinkage. Therefore, post-processing remains a viable alternative if you require a precise dimension. How can I enlarge the hole for the step motor? Before using the tool, I will explain X function. Although there is already a hole, it needs to be made larger. Usually, I will need to find the centers of the hole and rotate either the tool or the parts for the grinding or cutting. However, finding the center can be difficult, especially with limited equipment. In this case, I found another way to avoid finding the center and instead focus on the outline directly. Grinding is a suitable approach when it comes to enlargement. A handheld grinder is easy to find and convenient to use. I used a handheld grinder to adjust the parts, including the holes. Applying manual pressure is important when enlarging the holes. Making the holes into oval shape is easy if I don't constantly measure the diameters in multiple positions. This is another reason for creating this tool. I hope to find precise enlargements and its circularity. Consider using a handheld grinder and aligning with the outline. I have tried using bearings that I purchased for Springway Gearbox in the past. Short bars are also suitable for this application. You can create a circle with the grinder bed by having two bearings. And then the grinder bed can fix the circle and move the bearings along the circumference. This way you don't need to know where the center is. However, you might notice that only works in deburring mode and I need an enlargement. Once the bit is grinding more and creating a new circumference, there will be a limit for the bearings to align. This might cause poor circularity in the hole. You can think about how you will deal with this. I'll share how I stop this later. In practice, I created a frame for the bearings, and the frame slides on the rail with a screw for adjustment. This setup allows for gradual enlargement of the hole to the desired diameter. The advantage of this tool is that it can be customized using a 3D printer. I can easily design and print the bearings frame for the different hole sizes, making this tool a universal printer. However, it has limited ability with small holes, which are more cost-effective to handle with drills and rimmers. The key to this tool is its alignment and durability. If you plan to design your tool, ensure that the bearings are parallel to the grinder bit and that the structure is securely attached to the handheld tool. Different grinders may require different frame structures. For example, I have two grinders. So I designed the tool for the thinner one using clamping. I might design the tool with a spread if I need another one for this grinder. I suggest using ABS for the material sturdiness and high temperature resistance. ELA tends to deform over time. Okay, have you figured out how to deal with the circularity problem? The AI suggests using a conical shape bit instead of a cylindrical one. 
This method will remove material while maintaining the original diameter for the bearings to follow. However, there are some drawbacks. It's difficult to measure due to the angle between the new and original diameter, and a cylindrical shape is still needed for finishing. My approach makes some changes to this. I opted to stick with a cylindrical shape, increasing the bearing's contact surface length, the hole depth, and shortening the bit. I can create a two-stage grinding process. For example, I enlarge half of the hole depth to the desired size. The extending bearings align with the original outline and grind the new diameter. After finishing the new hull, I remove some bearings for shorter contact and use a longer bit to grind the last circle. This time, the bearings contact the new outline but grind the unenlarged circle. This two-stage process only requires the same cylindrical bed for grinding and always ensures alignment. This is a tool for whole post-processing. It would be handy if you are concerned about manually controlling the grinder's pressure. What do you think about this tool? Is there any potential improvement I can make? Leave a comment to share your thoughts. As always, moving forward.